What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel, Revis Talk Sports. In today's video, I will be giving you my projected wins and losses for each NFC North team, and I will be giving you my total wins for each team. So without further ado, let's hop into the first team. So the first team that I will be talking about is the Green Bay Packers, and they have the expected over and under nine and a half total wins for the upcoming season. So let's go by each team and figure this out. So in week one, they will be going to Brazil to be going against the Philadelphia Eagles. This is going to be a very tough game. I can see this game coming down to the fourth quarter, but this is going to come down to if the Green Bay Packers can stop the run game, especially now that the Eagles have Saquon Barkley and the times that the Packers have gone against a Saquon-led team they have not been successful as much so unfortunately i'm gonna have to give this l to the green bay packers week two i believe the green bay packers they're gonna come back home against the colts they're gonna come back and get that w and bounce back from that l and loss from brazil so they're coming week one and week two one and one now they're away at week three to tennessee titans I do believe that the Green Bay Packers will run away with a W. So there's a W for the Tennessee Titans. Week four, they're home against the Minnesota Vikings. This is the Aaron Jones revenge game. But um, I think that the Packers are going to squeak out a home game against the Minnesota Vikings. I think they might just give Sam Darnold quite a bit of a hard time. Um, so I believe that the Packers will get a W against the Vikings. Then at week five, they are away to the Rams. Um, Matt LaFleur has been successful against Sean McVay. And within their last 10 games against the Rams, the Packers are 9-1. and one. So um, I do believe it'll be a tough game because the past two times that the Packers have faced the Rams, it was Baker Mayfield starting and Matthew Stafford's backup due to Matthew Stafford being out with an elbow injury. But this is going to be a very close game with Matthew Stafford hopefully being healthy this time around with a fully loaded team. Um, I do think that the loss of um, Aaron Donald might be a bit of an impact. Um, so I think this could be like a rushing game for the Green Bay Packers and definitely do their best to exploit it. But Matt LaFleur has had his numbers against the Rams and the Packers as well the past 10 games. So I think they will squeak out a W. Now, with the Green Bay Packers... Coming home, they've been on a hot streak, four-game winning streak, and usually when the Packers are on a winning streak and they play against a team that they should beat, sometimes they kind of lay a duck and end up losing, and I think this is one of those tough games where the Packers are on a hot streak. They should be expected to beat the Cardinals, but I just think that this is one of those games where the Packers kind of let their guard down and kind of take the Cardinals team a bit easy. Um, I think this is going to be a game where they're going to rely on the run game. James Conner, Trey Benson, Kyler Murray is probably going to be moving around the pocket. So this is going to be a tough loss for the Green Bay Packers after having a nice four-game winning streak. Then they're home again against the Houston Texans. This is a tough game as well, but Texans are locked and loaded. This is going to be a tough game. I believe this should have been a primetime game, but... Um, this is going to be a tough game, but I think the Packers are going to lose here to the Houston Texans. So they're on a two-game losing streak. Now they're away to the Jacksonville Jaguars. I think they squeak out a W home against the Lions. Very close game. Um, I think this is one of those games where the Packers are going to want to squeak out a W before the bye week, and I think they do. Tough, tough game, but I do believe that the Packers will squeak out a W against Detroit. Now, after the bye week, they play against the Bears. I don't even think Matt LaFleur has ever lost to the Bears since having the Packers job. And, yes, the Bears have Kenan Allen. They have Caleb Williams at the quarterback position. But, um, yep, the Bears have a revamp offense. But until the Bears can take down the Packers, I'm just going to have to give this W to the Green Bay Packers. And Jordan Love will continue that ownership of the Bears. Week 12 against the San Francisco 49ers. Tough game, but the 49ers have just been a juggernaut, especially with, you know, Brian Ayuk. Hopefully he's still there by this time. Ayuk, Debo, Ricky Purcell, George Kittle, uh, Christian McCaffrey, Brock Purdy. And pretty much the defense is still solid. So this is going to be a tough loss for the Green Bay Packers. Week 13, loss to the Dolphins. Very explosive offense that the Dolphins have. Tough loss. 
Then they're also going to lose to the Detroit Lions. So three straight losses going to put a bit of a hamper to the Packers season. But I do believe they will bounce back with wins against the Seahawks, wins against the Saints. I do think they will split the series with the Vikings, and I think they end the season with a W against the Bears. So overall, with the Green Bay Packers, I have them going 10-7, and seven, so they will go over that 9.5. Now the second team that I will be talking about is the Detroit Lions. They have an expected 10.5 wins coming into the 2024 season. So let's see if they'll hit the over on that or the under. So in week one, against the Rams, I'm going to have to give the Lions a solid W. Against the Buccaneers, I think they'll get a W. Cardinals, W, and Seahawks, W. I mean, I think the Lions are going to start the season very hot. Um, Before the bye week, they're going to go 4-0. They have the best offensive line in the game. Give Jared Goff time to just look at who's open. They have St. Brown, Raymond. Williams, San Laporta, and then you have Montgomery and Gibbs. So I think the Lions are going to stick to their aggressive style that Dan Cable brings to this team. They're going to go for a lot of fourth down conversions, chew up a lot of clock, let Goff pick up, pick apart the defenses. So I think the Lions are going to get hot to start off the 2024 season, 4 0 before the bye week. Then they have the Cowboys. Last year, it was a very controversial loss. Um, but I think the Lions will bounce back in this game and they will get the W against the Cowboys. So they'll just go 5-0. and Then they have the Minnesota Vikings, the tough divisional game. I think this is where the Lions are going to get on a hot streak. And I think they're going to overlook the Vikings right here, unfortunately. So I'm going to have to give the L on this one to the Detroit Lions then after that, they have the Tennessee Titans. I think the Lions are going to get back into um, a groove following that loss to the Vikings. Probably throw that tape away, come back, beat the Vikings. To the Green Bay Packers, they have next. I do believe that they will split the series with the Packers just like they did last year. So in the first time around, um, I'm going to have the Lions losing to the Green Bay Packers. And then after the loss to the Green Bay Packers, they lost two out of their past three games. I think this is where the Lions start to heat up again, kick back into their winning streak. So against the Texans, tough game. I think this is where they rely on the running game a lot. So I could see my, either Montgomery or Gibbs having multi-touchdowns in this game. So definitely a win against the, te- uh, the Texans. Against the Jaguars, I definitely see the Lions getting a W against the Jaguars. Against the Colts. W right there against the Bears. I think this is where um, this game is going to go back and forth. I think this game probably won't come down. We'll probably come down into the second half of the game. Um, But I think the Lions will just squeak away and get that W against the Bears. Then they'll get that, uh, that split series against the Packers here, get a W, and then get that W against the Buffalo Bills. Um, So, yeah, they go back on a very hot streak after – losing two out of their three games in the middle of the season. Um, And then after beating the Bills, I think they will probably split against the Bears, get the loss, against the 49ers, get a loss, and then they'll end the season with a W against the Vikings. So overall, um, I think the Lions are going to have a very good regular season. I think at minimum, they'll probably reach the NFC divisional round if they do not get that first week by. But I think they could probably make a strong case going far in the playoffs. They're going to have a solid um, regular season again. And overall, my floor for them is probably 11. 11 wins is my floor. My height or my ceiling is probably 13, 14 wins. But overall, I got the Detroit Lions smashing on that 10 and a half. Team that I'm going to get into is the Minnesota Vikings. They have an expected seven and a half wins over and under. So let's take a look at their schedule and see what I think they will get. So week one against the New York Giants, I think the Vikings are going to squeak out that W. Um, I think it'll be a close game, honestly, but I think the Vikings will probably just squeak out a W here. I think Jefferson will probably have a multi-touchdown game here. So definitely a W for the Minnesota Vikings to start the season 1-0. and 
Um, then they come home against the San Francisco 49ers. Tough game. I'm going to have to give the L to the Vikings on this one. Home again against the Texans. Definitely an L. Close game, but definitely an L. I think C.J. Stroud will probably just have a very good game against the Minnesota Vikings in this one. Against the Green Bay Packers, I have them losing to the Packers at Green Bay. And then I they are in London against the New York Jets. That New York Jets defense is still solid. And if Aaron Rodgers is still healthy, I think this will be another loss to the Jets. So going into the bye week, the Vikings are going to go one and four. It's going to be a uh, quite an interesting bye week. Sure, they're going to have to um, look at a lot of things to see what's going on, but I don't think they're going to go into the bye week at 500. So one game against the Giants will get that W, lose to San Fran, lose to Houston Texans, lose to the Packers, and lose to the Jets. Then coming off the bye week, I think they kind of get themselves back together and get a shocking win against the Lions. So they get that W. They're at the Los Angeles Rams. I think they're going to lose in that game against the Rams. Back home against the Colts, I see them getting a W. Then against the Jacksonville Jaguars, W in that aspect. Then against the Tennessee Titans and the Chicago Bears, um, they're going to have a touch away, a tough away stretch towards the uh, middle of the season, but I think they're going to lose to the Titans and I think they're going to lose to the Chicago Bears against the Arizona Cardinals. They'll get that W against the Atlanta Falcons. I think they will get a loss at home against the Atlanta Falcons. Kirk Cousins will probably throw about 350 in that game. I don't know if that's going to happen, but the Kirk Cousins revenge game, they're going to lose to Atlanta. Then they're going to beat the Bears, lose to Seattle, beat the Packers, and lose to the Detroit Lions. So, yeah, I mean, I'm sure a lot of you are probably surprised of the low win totals of 7.5. I'm not really buying into the Sam Darnold quarterback, and I don't think he'll be able to kind of get the Vikings where they need to go this season. Um you, I won't be surprised if maybe towards the end of the season where they kind of just had enough of seeing Darnold, they'll just bench him, probably throw J.J. McCarthy in to kind of get some NFL reps in towards the end of the season and see how he looks. But I don't think the Vikings are going to have the season that they think they're going to have. Um, I think at most maybe eight wins, maybe nine. I think that's a tough stretch getting nine. And I think the floor will probably be about six or seven. But to me personally – I think they're going to get under seven and a half. I think they will probably just, just get seven on the dot. So this is my prediction. I think they will get that seven and a half under. And last but not least, we have the Chicago Bears with an expected total of eight and a half over and under rookie quarterback in Caleb Williams and the new addition of DeAndre Swift and Keenan Allen. So we're going to see how this team is going to do with my 2024 prediction. So in week one, I think Caleb Williams will get his first NFL win here against the Titans. So we'll give him that W right here. Sunday night football against the Houston Texans. I think CJ Stroud is probably going to show out on prime time. So I'm going to give the Bears an L on this one against the Colts. I think they'll get a W after a tough loss. So I think, you know, the first three games, I had them going 2-1. and one. Um, Then they're back at home against the Los Angeles Rams. Tough game, but I think Matthew Stafford and that offense is probably going to squeak one out against the Bears team. So I'll have them getting an L against the Rams. Then against the Panthers, W. Against the Jaguars, W in London. So they'll go into the bye week with about – Four wins, two losses, so over 500, four and two. I think it's pretty solid for a Bears team with the rookie quarterback. So four and two, not too bad. After the bye week, then we have the clash of the rookie quarterbacks in Caleb Williams versus Jaden Daniels. Um, I can see the Bears taking the commanders very lightly in this one, surprisingly. Um, 
So I think Jaden Daniels and the Commanders might squeak this one out. So I'm going to have to give the Commanders a W. So the Bears are going to get a loss here. Away at the Arizona Cardinals, I think they'll get a W here. Um, then they're back home for the next three games. So against the Patriots, I got them getting a W. Against the Packers, they're going to lose in that game. Against the Vikings, W. So three home game stretch, they go 2-1. and one. Then against the Lions on Thanksgiving, they're going to lose against the Lions I have. Against the 49ers, loss. Against the Vikings, loss. Then they think they'll split the series with the Lions. So I think they'll get that W here, beat the Seahawks, and lose against the Packers. But overall, I think the Bears may probably surprise a, a lot of people. The only way that the Bears will probably be less than eight wins is if this defense just crashes and burns and can't stop anyone or Caleb Williams just has a bad rookie season. That's the only way that I can see the Bears not hitting this eight and a half and over. Um, if the Bears' defense just kind of just doesn't stop anyone or this or Caleb Williams doesn't have a great season. But they surround him with talent, so the expectation is he should be able to work with what he has. So with my prediction, I think the Bears will go over this eight and a half get nine wins at least. I think that is, um, I think their floor is probably eight wins. Maybe the max is probably 10 wins. If they could probably squeak out a few wins in, on this schedule, but I just think they'll probably get a nice nine wins here and probably go for that wild card berth. So um, definitely wild card berth contention for the Bears. Um, but these are my prediction for these NFC North team with my over and unders on each team. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoy the content, please give this video a thumbs up. If you have any takes or predictions on these NFC North teams on their over and under, please give them, please comment below on what your thoughts are. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please subscribe as I make weekly football content every Mondays and Friday. Thank you so much and catch you next time.